more less logging. Okay, thank you. So, thank you for having me. Um, I'm today going to talk a little bit about chatbots and basically a little bit about. First, I would like to talk about the uh, like reasons why chatbots are now emerging. Uh, quick, like crash course on chatbots, and then some experience on building chatbots, as well as how it how it then relates to APIs. But basically, my topic is that it, chatbots are more about the user experience, and by well, in addition to user experience, API design. So it's just a entry point to different APIs. But let's get more to that in a few minutes. So. As, as Jakko talked, so I've been working with development for a while. Basically, e-commerce started as a hobby, and then in the last three years, we have been working on some web components technology for, for websites and cloud platforms, and more recently, this has been used in build chatbots. <coughs> and AP Ops YouTube channel, as well as I will put the slides on our website. The chatbot is a, like a very hot term, trendy term, and fairly long in development, from starting from the 60s when there was Elisa, like a psychotherapeutic, psychotherapeutic chatbot. But the main reason why I think that the chatbots are now gaining more popularity is the rise of instant messaging. So if you look at the Finnish Communication Authority statistics, so it's actually used more than email in, in some age groups. And also in some messaging is used even in the age group over 65 years old. Then some other drivers that realize the price of mobile internet. So we can use internet everywhere. Is of messaging and mobile messaging is popular. As well as social media has become more important customer service channel. So we are using different kind of text-based services more and more. Then we also have a much more APIs than earlier. So we can actually do something with the chatbot. So in Elisa in 60s was just like for fun, discussing, like for fun, like discussing about your experience, if it, if it, how the bot can relate to those. And then one of the reasons why many of the big companies are pushing forward the chatbot is the voice and recognition technology. So more and more mobile phones have some sort of voice-based assistance, which is then applicable to use with, with chatbots. And of course, there has been a lot of interest in artificial intelligence and chatbot like sort of personalizes the artificial intelligence, even if it's not maybe so important for the chatbots. And as we can see, so the interest is rising. Just a quick funny fact, as we are with, with Microsoft here. So that if you look at the search queries, so it was actually Microsoft fairly, fairly unsuccessful like, experience with they that then created like a lot of public awareness. So basically, it was some sort of AI that didn't really work as it was supposed to be. But the, the funny thing is that actually, probably that has been the starting point of the chatbot. So sometimes the, maybe the best marketing strategies are done by accident. Then if you look at the areas where chatbots are, are, or where there is a lot of interest in chatbots, so markets where this is. And I guess the main reason is the like, sort of the publish cessation of the APIs by big companies that they want to focus on these markets where there's a lot of demand and of course then the languages are people talking with, with in those languages. But uh, anyway, it's gaining popularity also here in Finland, especially we have been noticing in the last six months that it's sort of more and more people are recognizing what is a chatbot and it's not anymore like I need to explain. But do you see any correlation with that? language skills of the bots because there are like easier languages and, and languages that all the AI and text 
yes, I think that's a, one of the main reasons why this. But I don't really agree that this would be something would be a lot of easier. There is a more. It's just that they are not supported right now. Yes, by, by the yes, by the big big company. So there is no easy tool to build them. But in my experience, Finland hasn't been like Finnish isn't terribly difficult to build for those like chatbot purposes. If you even build like, like a custom model, probably it's uh, difficult to build it like a, it understands everything and then you could resell it. But if you build a custom model that understands those things that you need, so it's it's not terribly complex. And, and besides, it, it, the, the language, at least what it provides for the Finnish people, <coughs> doesn't have to be any academic. It's enough that it's 80% correct. It, it fills the purpose. It doesn't be, have to be perfect. Well, if, if it works, it is used and uh, it brings value to the customers. They will use it anyway. So it, uh, that's basically still the, the only way to actually know does, does, make, does it make any sense. Do the customers want to use it, even though it's not perfect? Yes, correct. And, and we have been working mostly with Microsoft language recognition and also there there's a lot of manual, sort of semi-manual work that needs to be done so it understands English. So for example, we need to come up with a list of synonyms what, what people could write when they look like I want the menu for food items. So, so it's but but that probably is the reason why there is a lot of interest in some markets that they have been big companies have built their tools for those languages. So so basically the chatbot is actually an API like is the topic of this and then it uses different APIs. So a quick look at the at the different kind of platforms. For example, website, Facebook, WhatsApp, or different kind of, basically any kind of text-based messaging tool that you want to use. Then we have the chatbot, which has an endpoint that will receive messages from the Facebook or, or any kind of messaging app, your custom app or email or so on. And usually it needs to use APIs, and a lot of APIs, because chatbot sort of hides the like information, what it has behind it. So people could ask for a lot of different things, which means that it must have a lot of different kind of information behind it so that it's, it's useful. And as an API, so basically the same kind of security concerns apply. So there could, can be injection attacks, there can be like someone that may try to attack directly the API and, and so on. One, one important concern is, of course, that the, the user is using Facebook, so he's logged in into Facebook. So if you people will send links and share links there, so maybe it could be an interesting, interesting channel to attack Facebook users by by using somehow wrongly your chatbot. Then I quickly look at the technical tools. So I have seen there's a lot of different kind of static chatbot builders. So especially on Facebook, so looking for information, you can ask questions, or it can ask for your email, and then it's related to your email. For example, marketing, asking for leads, and, and so on. Then the custom chatbots can basically be built on on any programming language. I believe Node.js is the most popular here, and of course, then you need to build a series of internal APIs so that the chatbot will sort of answer what you what you need. And for connectivity, you can build it directly with the Facebook platform and Skype and so on. But as the number of these platforms is rising to support chatbots, so it's probably better to either use some tool like BotKit or, or Microsoft Bot Framework. So you only integrate once and then you will integrate to the different channels. And then there is a lot of like, different kind of tools for the language understanding. We have been working with, with, mostly with Microsoft's platform so far. And then also like a simple custom language model that understands adequately what the user is, is sort of, well, what is the intent of the users? So Microsoft uh, doesn't have an actual bot kind of framework, it's IBM does. So there's like, you can build chatbots if you want this program. Isn't there one for Microsoft? Yes, sort of a bot framework. I guess Dennis maybe will, will okay. briefly talk about it, but it's basically they have a connector that will connect to different tools. Then the language understanding, which is sort of like related to the chatbots, but it's also a separate product. 
and then also a SDK for building on Node.js and, and Microsoft. So it's sort of it's one way to organize the dialogues and discussions and, and so on. But it's not like a well, it's still a like your custom code that you can build with it. Then, in, in my experience, the most challenging thing is when, when I discuss with clients is that there's so many different kind of ideas on on chatbots. What kind of what kind of thing it can do? And I guess most of the clients who are interested in chatbots have been sort of what I call introbots. So it can answer some in, in like simple questions, like say hello, we will serve you in a few moments. Maybe it will answer some questions that you have, like what are your opening hours, and then it will sort of give give the control to a human after that. The standalone bots are one that is raising in popularity with the sort of static chatbot builders, especially the lead generation thing or some sort of static information search. But then I guess the most important or interesting ones are information bots and connected bots. So we can, information bots maybe connect to a sensor, read the data, search user guides or documents or so on. And then the connected bot may actually do some transactions. For example, set the temperature of the room, maybe update the password, or maybe you can use it to send your status reports. Like, I'm, I'm done this task, so what is my next task? And so on. And the intropods on standalone bots, I guess, is a good way to get started, but I guess most of these require them fairly extensive APIs to sort of be useful and take the most benefit. Then related to the language understanding, so the next thing I have noticed with a lot of clients is that the chatbot, like it's chat, so people assume that, okay, I can chat with it, and, and then we often have some sort of like robot, like icon of a robot, and we think that we can discuss anything. But the language understanding is very limited. So it can understand the intent, what you are trying to say. I want food, so then it will always give you sort of like a menu where you can find food. But maybe it doesn't understand if you want Chinese food or something like that, unless you build it. So usually we have been like sort of separating these styles that you can have a conversational style, you can say anything to the chatbot. And it sort of looks through the sentence. And then, for example, if you are making an order, like you want to purchase something, so it will fill in the different details of the order based on the order that the customer is saying them. And maybe if you want to like, okay, now submit the order, so it will ask for more information. But more popular are the guided ones, so where you are sort of asking like, if, if I say I want a house, where it asks me for the size of the apartment that I need, the city, and if I don't provide an, like a valid city, so it doesn't go any further. So it will render a high quality information for the next steps of it. But I guess the most important, or well, the easiest way is sort of to mix these smartly and then like come up with the best approach. The best point about chatbots is that you can sort of see all the time how people are interacting. On a website, you cannot see that. Like, you can maybe see why the mouse is moving, but you don't know what, why they are doing something. But on chatbots, you can see what they are actually typing and then react and develop accordingly. But basically, the mixed interaction model we have been using is that we have a sort of a free-form conversational style on top, like what, what do you want to do? And then it will go to a, like a strictly defined dialogue that will ask for the information or actually what is needed for the transaction. And, and so far, we haven't had any very difficult challenges with this, except one one that I will discuss in a Second. The another one important intro to chatbots is that text is one option, but there has been more and more different kind of user elements. So there's been buttons, you can send GPS, you can send images, you can send voice, and, and so on. And especially the button kind of style is becoming more and more popular. And then on the output, so we can of course send images and sound and so on. But there has been a, like a rise of so-called card layouts. So on mobile, on many chatbots, you are clicking buttons, and then you are getting a visual layout in the form of a so-called card. So it would seem that 
this is actually moving towards actually a like a graphical user interface, so that the <coughs> chatbot maybe isn't any more so conversational, but it's actually like a, like a standardized form of a mobile app. Then one learning we had is that like to think this think about the different kind of like interaction styles. So the easiest one is that we just answer the questions of the user, but then it sort of becomes quite boring to, to go these kind of discussions when you just go and all over and over again different kind of things. So we have been using this three-step approach to sort of come up with ideas on what we can use. So we have the reactive, then we have the predictive. So for example, if you're on a train and you're arriving to your destination, so we can check out if it's rainy. So you don't need to ask for the for the weather because if it's there is a high risk of training, so if you're probably interested in that. Or then we can go further to proactive models. So for example, on if you're an e-commerce operator, so you can use the chatbot for pickup of the warehouse products. And when there is a new order, so the chatbot can inform you that okay, now there has been an order and go pick up on this shelf. And maybe you can even then sort of send the receipt that now I have been back to these items and so on. <coughs> then one, one very interesting topic is the chat of personality. So if, if you are talking with, let's say, uh, different kind of uh, user experience experts or copywriters or marketing people, so it seems that the personality is fascinating. But then I would probably urge first to think like if, if you really need that personality, because it will interaction will go. So if you have a low robot, so you will answer slightly differently than if you call it like document search service. Then if it's document search service, so you understand how it sort of works. You can use Google kind of kind of queries. Well as if it has a personality. So then you probably at least a lot of customers will write like a full sentence. Can you please do this for me? Which may not be the <coughs> idea of how it will change the, the kind of analytics on, on how you can, how you can actually understand when you look at the logs that what is the purpose of the user when they are like doing that search because if it's like only like two words and plus you won't know maybe the intention so you can't maybe do it as well as you actually had a personality yeah I think that's very and, and there is also this like when you can start to hate it and love it <laughs> <laughs> share that yeah. you hate it or love it which is actually quite important <laughs> yeah I think that's a very fun point so sort of to think about if it's if it's the personality is important for you not and then then my experience has been like with the personality that you sort of need to build separately a personality that it's sort of it's like you can talk about the bot and like who you are and how you are doing. Because if you just ask time, so it's not easy to sort of relay the personality. If I ask you, there is that sort of thing as missed time though. Maybe I, which was actually a very easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it a phone call? Yeah, it was a phone call. Yeah. Okay, maybe I need to look it up. <laughs> It's part of the history, so. Yeah, actually, it's <laughs> but we don't remember it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, but that is the thing. Yeah. We do remember it, and people yeah. need to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so mm -hmm. maybe everyone will now check out Nate the Aika. Is it this yeah. time or something? There is also this thing when there is actually a personality, people will actually have kind of a higher level of expectation. They think it's actually, uh, it should be a bit more uh, like a person. So the questions can be more complicated comparing to that. Uh, I have seen that because I was trying one bot here, like the, our frequently asked question. And then people were actually asking the quite uh, high level questions. It's a person. Even though in the beginning I was saying, I'm just a, a, a chat, but don't have too much expectations from me. But the, the questions were quite like, it seems they were talking to a person. It's quite interesting also. Yeah, I think if you can call it like a FAQ bot, so then for FAQ service, so then people will sort of 
guess what? It may even no, but if it's a personal it's a yeah, but still it didn't help. Like I think uh, higher for sure. Yeah. But I was testing. It was interesting for me to see like what are the questions that are coming. Basically, they were thinking that the bot as an assistant, for example. But you probably did get more in, you know, like in the same just ask like food. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, so. Yeah, I think that's an important point. Also, in the personal, but also the like in the chatbot design, like how you get the feedback and like if it if the answer was correct or not. But then the main main challenge that we have had is with the sort of the simplification of it because you only can show one thing at a time and you can ask for one one thing. So I guess well, at least in my opinion, many at least I am sort of famous for overcomplicating things and bring out like 100 different search criteria and so on. So it's just fairly <coughs> difficult, difficult question on how to do it. So on the side you see one, one design I made for sort of searching trains which was clearly like sort of over-engineered, like you can get the optimal train like what is the MTS or the cheapest or so on. Maybe some people would like it, but then for other people that would sort of need, would need to be able to probably predict based on the history of the user, probably then, for example, optimized based on the number of trains and the available seats and, and so on. So, so far I don't have any answer for this question. Basically, that has been so far as like a trial and you know, we have come up with some, some different ideas, but it's, a, it's a, the, like the basic finding is that even a very simple, simple thing, for example, you search three seats in a train. So it's fairly complex to sort of make it usable. So you probably need to just like first test it yourself and have people search it and then you can sort of like understand the context that people are using it in and, and doing the searches. And this has also been the main challenge with the different, or at least one of the main challenges with the APIs that it's, uh, we sort of need to fetch a lot of data from multiple sources and then we need to create the code to, for example, find the fastest train or the cheapest train or the emptiest train or, or so on. So it, sort of we need to build an API layer on top of different APIs that will do this. Well, then a few opinions and, and some, some predictions, which I think is my, my final points. So it's that the API management is, a, is actually a very big challenge. So first in, the information is that there is info APIs, but where they are and who has the sort of the credentials, then how do we secure the APIs? So far, most of them give us like a static password and username. And I'm not sure that is the sort of the secure way for, for many years to go on. It is not just for Yeah. And yeah, so then, then the question becomes on, on how can we sort of get them properly under one kind of authentication so we don't need to implement different kind of authentications for each, each API and, and so on. And also we like sort of, before we started this event there was some discussion about the different standards for like, geocoding and so on. So there is also some challenges, like like very basic things that are have been challenging. Then one thing I think is that, in my opinion, probably many times the internal use would be more interesting than sort of customer service because people are contacting customer service or because they have some sort of problems or they need service. And building a bot to those needs is a fairly complex. So I guess the bot for API specs is one one very interesting internal use case, which, which Jarko will show in a few minutes. And then also one important point is that chatbots can be on the web chat, and many people like sort of, because it's called chatbot, so think of the okay, web chat, but the platforms like Facebook, probably WhatsApp in the future, at the moment it doesn't support chatbots maybe in the future, and Skype and, and so on. Hopefully in the future, like Cortana or Siri or things like that are maybe more interesting than the 
web chat. And the language understanding has been like sort of the driving force. Like there's a lot of talk about like about the different different language understanding tools and so on. But uh, my guess would be that it's probably getting less and less important as people start learning to use these tools. So you maybe have buttons and you sort of understand that I don't need to, can you please tell me what food is available so you learn to sort of use the keywords like restaurant menu and, and so on. So in the end, I would like to like finalize with the chatbot planning list checklist that we have made so far. So I think this would be the sort of the most important ones I, I would like to learn from a client. So what are the use cases, the value of why people are using it? So possibly like what are the reactive and what kind of predictive we can do and if there is need or opportunities for some proactive messaging. And then as importantly like the use context, are you using it on a, on a for example, on the street, or do you have more time to think about, or are you using it? Then the personality aspect, if there is a need, or if it can, or if there is a want to like sort of side with the company, some sort of mascot or something like that. Then how do you find the bot? So I think this bot discovery is the major lack in the, sort of the infrastructure. So there is no easy way to search for bots on your phone. So maybe at some point there will be like you can ask them. Siri or Cortana, like I want food, so it will sort of give you a list of bots that it will then relate to. Let's see. Then, of course, who are the users? What kind of devices do they use? Do they use like the speech enabled devices or written or mobile phone where you sort of cannot write any long sentences? Of course, languages, platforms like Facebook and possibly some more interesting. And then, of course, the external interface APIs that are available. So uh, the API is actually having the sort of the biggest roadblock. Like there are a lot of great ideas, but then sort of getting the API and getting the information in a usable format is, isn't really simple. So thank you for the for your interest. So I will put on the slides on the on our website as well as this, and we are going to put this on the YouTube channel. So to Yes. Uh, do you have any examples of chatbots you've built or any use cases like real, real time client work that you have done in the future as an example here? Mm, I'm not sure I have online. I could probably give you some examples. So, but the most interesting we have done is recently with the sort of the trace, with the like, sort of a technology exploration for, for we are, <coughs> which basically the most interesting point was that it was integrated with different kind of sensors actually Mohammed was was building some of the sensors so we could sort of track the traffic who is going on and, and and so on. But basically most of our projects have so far been like um, technology exploration or then were internal use case. So not not so much on sort of customer service channel. We have tested some but I guess the lead generation is the most interesting mm -hmm. topic. There and then some simple like answering some simple questions. Sort of interval style. Yeah. Any other questions? Comments? 